What they saying? <laughs> what men are saying is women tend to evaluate each other based on a male curriculum. Ooh. Your female friends are great men. <laughs> okay. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of women enter relationships in bad faith. Oh. Like it's, it's a, I know I'm a good woman as I'm entering this relationship. You have to prove to me you're a good man. Oh, okay. So the expectation is you ain't shit until you prove otherwise. Okay. How can I respect you? Valid. So how do we undo that? Um, I think that as a woman, I think that may come from a place of healing and knowing a sense of self. Um, I think that, like you said, if you enter a relationship in good faith, you should, we should operate more on the innocent until proven guilty instead of the opposite way around. I mean, America doesn't operate like that, even though they said we should. Um, So, but I think because of a lot of the inherited trauma that we have from other relationships, from generations, from our family, um, from what we see on TV, from what we see in our lives, from what other people in our lives preach to us, oh, these niggas ain't shit, you know, walk them like a dog, um, you know, for every, you know, woman that he's talking to, there's five more on the side, you know, type of thing. Um, I think that if you enter a relationship in good faith and you are in a place where you're healing or working towards healing, that you should extend that same trust to your partner. Because why would you enter something if you already feel like you're untrustworthy of this person? You wouldn't go buy a car knowing that, that's a bad analogy. (laughs) But I don't know, that's a really good question. And I can only speak for myself in this point. Um, I think I have a very different view of love and relationships in life than a lot of other people do that are my age. <laughs> um, but I, I think as women, it's pretty much like you said, like we have to give our black men more grace, but we feel like often that they have to prove themselves first. It's almost like we are the CEO and y'all are applying for a job, you know, and it shouldn't be like that. I I, I often say two two of the most effective tools of white supremacy was setting a precedent of the black woman is inherently unattractive and the black man is inherently criminal. Mm. I have to be cognizant of that as a black man. Okay. And I have to be um, graceful with that in our interactions. Mm -hmm. Um, There seems to be, or or, or, that energy isn't reciprocated because the zeitgeist is continuing to push this narrative that niggas ain't shit and niggas are toxic Mm. and, and guard your heart, sis. So how do we... Because I want to move away from everything niggas can do to be better. Mm -hmm. What can the female black... First of all, is there a black female delegation? (laughs) And what can they do to move this conversation forward? Right now? I 
I don't know if I would say there's as a whole, there's a black female delegation right now. Why? <sighs> to box a woman, to box a woman in, <laughs> you cannot fit every single type of woman into this box and be like, I am the spokesperson for the black female delegation. Um, there are so many types of women and does just, just like their views just differ <sighs> right now. Okay. Like the big, the big divide, as you all have discussed in your other videos, um, you know, you've got the city girl, you know, um, the pro ho movement, um, the sexually liberated and free. And then you've got like the more like super conservative, type of woman you put those two women on a show like this they're gonna go at it like in and not in all aspects because there's probably a lot of similarities um underlying that they maybe don't see but um i think like as a whole sometimes like and i see this a lot too where we tear each other down more than you know black men or more than white people. So I think to say that we can put the whole black female delegation in a box, I don't really agree with that. So my personal opinion. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. <laughs> and and I think um, you know, me personally, one of my one of the things I say all the time is that we need to stop using that term black people are not a monolith as a rebuttal. Because monolithic people survive. <laughs> Monolith, monolithic communities thrive because there's a sense of one band, one sound. The reason we can't get on the same page is because we can't get on the same page. Mm -hmm. Right? So moving back to the whole Facebook thing, <laughs> why is it, in your opinion, that so many young, successful, intelligent, therapized black women or having um or not having success in love and companionship shit <laughs> i ooh, i do not know <laughs> i i think there are a lot of people in this world who are operating more off survival and off hurt than off of love. And even in those three terms, there's intersectionality. But at this age that we're in, you get told, it's like two different tales. You need to settle down and start a family. Nah, you have that, and then you have you're young, wild, and free. These are your best years. Live it up. So I see more people operating in the young, wild, and free stage right now um, than in the let's settle down and be a family and buy a house. I mean, the economy is not suited for that either, but that's a whole different topic. But... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I have trouble dating. Um, I'm sure some people in the comments will tell me why after this video, but um, um, I don't. The only thing I see is that like a lot of people aren't therapized, as you say, like they they haven't worked through a lot of these traumas that we're dealing with, and they manifest themselves in relationships. So you deal with a lot of situationships, a lot of. Um, Things where, you know, there's no strings attached or, you know, we kind of just doing what we want, floating by because we don't know how to operate in that space of being in a committed relationship and respecting and loving and working together for one common goal. Yet we just, I don't think a lot of us are there and there's nothing wrong. Wrong with that. That's a lie. There is something. <laughs> I mean, like everybody's not meant to be 
in a relationship, like, if they don't want to be. Um, so. Most black women want to be. I'm sorry. Most black women want to be. Yeah. Or they claim they want to be. Yeah. So, and I, and I think that's, a, that's an interesting conversation because I have it a lot with my male friends. And um, most, if not all of my male friends are the, the niggas y'all want, right? What they say, mm. if you're curious. No, I'm curious. <laughs> okay. What they say is that if you, <clears throat> if you see a group of five women, right? And let's say one of them has been successful and, and she's looking at her group and she's like, um, Emily is a doctor. Um, Savannah's a lawyer. Excuse me if you're using white girl names, but let's, <laughs> that's what's coming to mind. Savannah James. Yeah, 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 yeah there we go. Um, and what's the name is a, is a, is a, you know, community organizer. These are women of Timba and Calabar. These are women of, you know, movers and shakers. And why are they not having success with men? These are women who go to therapy five times a week and they go to the gym six times a week. <laughs> what men are saying. What they say. <laughs> what men are saying is women tend to evaluate each other based on a male curriculum. Ooh. Your female friends are great men. <laughs> okay. But they are terrible women. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because unfortunately, and this is part of the message I try to push when I have a conversation with a woman is the things that move the needle for you when it comes to me are necessarily the things I would prioritize. Damn. That the things that move the needle for me when it comes to you are necessarily the things you would prioritize. Yeah. But if we're going to look at each other as puzzle pieces who must fit, we can't be the same. So you being strong, black, educated, Makes you a great dude. Doesn't necessarily make you a great. And sometimes, unfortunately, it actually works to your detriment. Because the more educated you are, the less agreeable you are. <laughs> the, more, the more successful you are, the harder you are to please. Yeah. The more traveled you are, the easier it is for you to get bored. So as a man. Damn. <laughs> okay. That 80% of women in your group tend to seem like a terrible proposition. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on that? I think it's valid, 100%. Um, yeah, I can, I mean, you say that like, <laughs> I'm getting my second master's right now. <laughs> so I have two businesses. <laughs> you know, I'm doing all these Stop. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Granted, I hate the strong black woman trope. Uh, cut it out. I don't want to be strong. I want to be soft, you know. Um, but um, yeah, and I, I, I can 100% agree to that as much as it hurts me to say it. Um, I can 100% agree to that. And I speak on that because um, a friend that I have, he kind of told me the same thing. I'm like, I want to buy a house, you know, I just can't wait to get my house. I can't wait to buy a new car. I want a Tesla, you know, can't wait to get my second business off the ground. Um, I'm looking to get in real estate. I'm trying to have seven streams of income. He's like, men don't give a fuck about any of that. <laughs> like, he's like, you can live with your mom until we get married. I really could give two shits. <laughs> he's like, I don't care if you have a raggedy car, you know, like it is what it is. Like when we get married, I'm going to get you a new car. Um, so it's, he's, he was the one that kind of brought it to my attention. He's like, all these things that you're working towards, like that you feel make you more attractive to a man, they don't care about. They care, do you look good? And can you turn my house into a home? And he's like, that's all I care about. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, and he's especially, he's like the caliber of man that you want, you know, they want, you know, that they don't want, women that you know are out here trying to oh you have four degrees great for you like I don't give a damn <laughs> like you know like I'm gonna be the one bringing in the money you know you can work if you want to but you don't have to you know type of thing um he was like now if you want a different type of man that might need you for your money and might need you to go get those degrees because he's struggling then yeah he loves that part about you because you are the caretaker in the relationship but for 
the caliber of man that most women want, they don't care about that. So I think that your point is 100% valid as much as it hurts to say. Like, And sometimes I get caught up in saying that too. I'll be like, I know more good women than I know good men, but it's because I'm gauging my women friends on male standards. So that just slapped me in the face. 